If you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you'd like to have more money and funding for your deals, regardless of your credit, regardless of your income, regardless of your experience, don't go anywhere because in just a moment, we're getting ready to plug you into the money. Welcome to the Jay Connor Show. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, coming to you here from Eastern North Carolina, specifically Moorhead City, Atlantic Beach. And I'm excited to once again have as my co host here on the show, Chaffee Wynn. Hello, Chaffee. Hello, Jay. How are you? Fantastic. How are you doing today, man? I am hot. <laughs> I am in Chicago. It is mid nineties and muggy. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, look, uh, don't worry because the hottest part of the summer has not arrived yet. So you got more to come. So uh, yeah, hot topic today too, don't we, Jay? <laughs> we do have a hot topic today, and a matter of fact, it's one of the most popular questions that you and I get asked from people uh, attending uh, the live events or whatever. So, Chaffee, I'm going to hit you from the unexpected. You get to introduce today's show. Tell our listeners and viewers what in the world is the Jay Connor show about and what in the world do, do we do here and why would they want to stick around until the end of the show? Well, you definitely want to tune in to the Jay Connor show because you talk about all things real estate. So if you're looking to buy a house, if you're looking to raise private money, if you're having challenges purchasing and finding money out there, you're the private money authority, Jay, and that's why people want to tune in. So we talk about real estate. We talk about finding private money. We talk about using it. We talk about finding properties uh, on and off the market. We find, talk about systems and automation, everything from beginning to end of real estate. And then obviously one of my favorite things is we talk about the mindset piece of it, how to actually implement what we discussed today and on the other shows for this podcast and at your live events as well. So, exactly. So, speaking of live events, that's how we're going to plug everybody into the money. So, again, you want funding for your deals, regardless of your credit, income, or experience. Uh, we got a uh, virtually free ticket uh, to offer you for being a follower and listener of the Jay Connor Show. At this live event, I don't know of any other live event like this for real estate investors. We It's a three-day event. We always have it right here in Moorhead City, Atlantic Beach. And the reason we have the live event here is because we can't do it anywhere else the way we do it. Mm -hmm. We actually go out and look at our houses that uh, our company owns that uh, we've invested in. Uh, they may be rehabbed already in stage. They may not be rehabbed etc. So there's all different stages that these houses are in. We teach you how we found these deals before other real estate investors even knew they existed. We show you the numbers. We teach you the rehabbing part of the business. If you're interested in rehabbing, you don't have to be interested in rehabbing. But if you are, you'll learn that on the, on the uh, tour. You get to meet uh, our team members to question them, our contractors, our crew leaders, our interior designer, uh, our virtual assistants that helps us find the deals. Of course, at the live event, we're going to have private lenders there that you can network with. We're going to teach you how to find deals 55 different ways. We're going to teach you how we uh, fund them, how we sell them quickly in three days or less, and then how we automate the entire process. $3,000 ticket, yours is virtually free. It's only for a $97 registration fee is all that you have to invest Yes, you're probably going to have to get on an airplane to get here. It's not easy to get here at all, but it's worth jumping through the hoops. We have people come from all across the nation. It's a fantastic networking opportunity. Here's the website, Chaffee, and we'll put it right up here on the video for those watching on YouTube. That is uh, www.jayconner.com -E forward slash all in lowercase money podcast. Jay Connor. I'm with an ER in case you're listening. Jay Connor, C O N N E R dot com forward slash money podcast dot com. Chaffee, anything you want to highlight on the yes? Tell them what we do on the uh, since we do personal development, et cetera. Tell them about the free one on one strategy sessions that they get individualized and customized at the live event. And I tell you, folks, just the free strategy sessions that we have at the event is worth you making the trip. Tell them about it, Chaffee. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, obviously, well, obviously, obviously, because uh, uh, the personal, the personal, the is what I love. 
do in the strategy sessions that we is we talk about you, the student. We talk about what's going on in your life, what's going on in your business, and then how can we overcome that those challenges and move you forward. So I love it just personally because I've seen the aha moments that happen from those strategy sessions. I see the changes in people's attitudes and mindset when I get to sit down with them and the other coaches would get to sit down with them and just go through that process of, you know, this is what's going on in my life. And to have somebody on the outside looking in and helping you with the big picture that sometimes you're stuck in, you can't see, uh, as, as one of my favorite uh, mentors, Les Brown says, you can't see the picture from inside the frame, right? <laughs> right? We're outside the frame, we're looking in and we can help you see that big picture. So that's why I love those strategy sessions. Yeah. You know, really help implement what you teach at the three day event, Jay. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been I've been going to real estate investing events for 15 years now, and I still do. I mean, you know, you never know it all and strategies and techniques, they change. But, you know, here at this event, I learned years ago that, well, like, you know, a good friend of mine named Tim says, you know, until you own the real estate between your ears, it's going to be very challenging for you to own the real estate out there. Right. So we, uh, we we started incorporating the personal mindset piece to the real estate training, which really has helped the students get there quicker, overcome the challenges, overcome the fears, and, you know, help everybody get to the next level. Hey, I'm, I'm going to throw one more thing about your live event, uh, which we haven't talked about yet, which is when you come to the live event and you participate in the group. One, you're teaching it, right? So you're there. It's not some other instructor somewhere else teaching it. It's, it's actually you. And two, you know, we're like a big family there. I mean, we have a good time. We get to network with each other. We get to really know each other and mix and mingle. We're not this big multi-billion dollar corporation with people you, you, know, you don't know or anything like that. We're, we're there the entire three days and, and beyond, right? And, and so you know, it's, I love just the family feeling of your events and how we just really get to know each other and, and really understand the students and see how we can really help each other. So, yeah, absolutely. I throw that out there. <laughs> well, I appreciate, I appreciate that because I've been to some real estate investing events that were not like that at all. I mean, whoever the speaker was on stage, mm -hmm. you could talk to them, you couldn't get to them, you couldn't ask them questions. I mean, it's like they're in, they're out and, you know, like they're just some rock star or whatever. And, or they, at least they, that's the way they viewed themselves. And, you know, that's not us. I right. mean, you're there, Chaffee. I'm there. Just tell people how many years you've been a business coach and a personal development uh, coach and consultant. Well, I started down the path of personal development uh, coaching in 2006, and I went independent in 2008. So it's uh, it's been uh, you know 10 years, about yeah. a decade, where I've been in the coaching industry. And before that, I was you know I started my business in 2002. So before that, I was in the corporate world for over a decade, you know, for, for a while. So. <laughs> You're, you're, you're sharing your age there, Chaffee. That's but what I know, right? I'm older news, than I might look. <laughs> yeah, good news for you, you don't look it. Hey, I tell you what, I was at a real estate investing event earlier this week. And fantastic, fantastic time and great friends there as well. But someone came up to me, Chaffee. And you know what they said to me? They said, Jay, man, you're looking good. <laughs> you know what I said to them? I said, well, you know, there's three stages of life, right? There's youth, there's middle age, and there's you're looking good. You know? <laughs> he reached the pinnacle, Jay. <laughs> I've reached the pinnacle of you're looking good, you know, my lands. So let's jump right on into it, uh, Chappie. Uh, what are we talking about today? So today we're talking about a hot topic that uh, a lot of people want to know about, that some people are afraid to learn about, and you got to know about it anyway which is how do I find a real estate investor friendly attorney? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> There's a lot of attorneys out there, right? There's a lot of uh, guys that'll just take your money and charge you per hour to do stuff. Only how do you really find a good one that's investor friendly and that will take care of you? I'm glad we're talking about this on this show, Chavi, because I tell you, you know, as I travel the nation and have the opportunity to, speak to a lot of real estate investors, a lot of new real estate investors and seasoned ones. But from the new real estate investors, you know, besides where do you get the money <laughs> to fund your deals? 
one of the most uh, you know popular questions I get is, you know, how am I going to find you know a real estate attorney to work with? They really start asking that question when they've looked for one, right? right? And you have several methods of finding a real estate investor attorney. And so let's let's just dive right into that. You know, why don't you share two or three of the strategies that you've used to actually find a really good real estate investor friendly attorney? Yeah. So let me first define what a friendly real estate <laughs> investor attorney is and what a non friendly. It doesn't mean they're not nice people. It doesn't mean they're not friendly. It means that they understand, the real estate attorney understands and gets what we as real estate investors do. For example, and due to the time constraints of the show, I can't go into what all this stuff means that I'm getting ready to say, but in previous shows, we've talked about it in detail. So, so Chaffee, if we've got folks that are listening and viewing uh, to this show and they don't understand these phrases, Let's encourage them to go back <laughs> to the previous shows. And we've got the shows titled and what it talks about. So, for example, here come, here come the industry phrases. All right. So, for example, if a real estate attorney or an attorney a real, will not do subject to deals or if they won't do lease option deals or if they won't do wholesale deals, or if they won't do double closing deals, or if they won't do, you know, assignment of contract deals. Those are the hot phrases. If they won't do that kind of stuff, they are not a real estate, they're not a friendly attorney to us real estate investors. So in answer to your question, Chavi, how do we find them? I'm going to give four right now, the four hot ways to quickly find a friendly attorney to do your transactions. Number one, get involved, join. You need to be doing this anyway, right? So get involved and join your local real estate investor association. You can search reia.org all across the nation. If you don't have one in your local area, search, go, to, go on Meetup. There's huge groups now that are not associated with the National Association that an organizer just putting their own groups together, search for those groups, get in contact with the organizer or the leader of the group, tell them you want to be, you're looking to be referred. And of course, if you go attend the meeting, they will more quickly refer you to who they use than just calling up on the phone. So go to the meeting. Um, secondly, at that meeting, you don't have to just network with the organizer. Network with the other people that are actually doing the business. I mean, they're doing lots of deals. They're not newbies. You want to find who's actually doing deals, and they will, of course, be able to refer you. Um, in addition to that, once you have a realtor that's doing your deals, you got an investor-friendly realtor. Actually, that's another show, Chaffee. We should do a show on how to find an investor-friendly realtor, right? You just ask them, who do they recommend, you know, to do the investor deals? I mean, your realtor is going to know other real estate investors and they're always going to be able to refer. And then here's a really stealthy under the radar method that probably none of our listeners had heard. All right. And that is, I wish I'd thought of this. I can't take credit for it. One of my platinum students actually came up with this method. Tell me about it. This is what she did. And it worked like that. All you got to do is go to Google or whatever your favorite, you know, uh, search engine is type in real estate attorney and your city and state or your area that you're searching. And that's it. Search for real estate attorney. Boom. Now, not all real estate attorneys, of course, are real estate investor friendly. OK, do the search. Here comes all you know these attorneys in your area. Step number two, draft a simple email. OK, here's the email. Here's the subject line. Subject line says, real estate investor seeking real estate attorney. That's it. That's your subject line. All right. The, and then the body of the email, it just says, you know, uh, by the way, you're going to get all these email addresses from your Google search. That's where the email addresses are. All right. So it's, it's manual labor. Boom, boom, boom. You want to, you know, you want to personalize them. 
So here's the body in your person. So you know, dear Mr. So-and-so, dear Mrs. So-and-so, don't call them by their first name. This is a profession. And you say, I'm so-and-so and I'm, you know, I'm a real estate investor in this you know, area. I'm seeking to refer all my transactions and business to one primary real estate attorney. Next paragraph. Do you handle, and the, the, those use those phrases. Do you do subject to closings, assignments, a contract, et cetera? Everything I just said. If so, please call me and give your cell phone number. Please call me on my cell phone at or reply to my email address here to let me know if you're interested in talking about receiving all my referrals. So I, my student did that a few months ago. Her name is Sherry and sent it out. She had like 120 or so email addresses that she was sending to, right? And like the same afternoon, she'd only gotten to like 22 emails that had gone out. She's already gotten multiple phone calls to her cell phone saying, yes, we do those deals. We want to talk to you. So that's the hot one right there. Well, so Jay, that leads me to the next question then is that now I got this list of 20 or more real estate attorneys from referrals, from Google, from, you know, RIA clubs, from all over these places. How do I narrow it down? How do, you know, what should I ask them? How do, how do I verify that, uh, you know, I should be working with this guy or gal? Exactly. All right. Here it comes. When we get on first, the first thing I want to take notice of is how quickly did they even respond to my email? All right. All right. So if somebody's responding within the hour to my email, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> I'm pretty impressed already. OK, so how quickly did they respond? Now, if they don't respond for a day or two, that could be a good sign, too, that they are a busy firm. They do a lot of business, which that means they know what they're doing. On the other hand, you may not get very, very fast service, but they're responsive. So how quickly? Number two, I want to I want to ask them what percentage of their business is actual real estate transactions versus, you know, whatever else. And, you know, I don't have anything really against the big firms. But I'd much rather be working with a smaller firm. Typically, smaller firms are, are more responsive. I want to reconfirm that they really do those transactions that were in the email that I sent out. You know, do you do those you know, types of transactions? I want to ask, do I get direct access to you or am I going to be working through your paralegal? I want to know, do they charge a retainer fee? If I call up with a question, you know, to the paralegal about a closing, I'm on the phone with five minutes. Are you going to be charging me, you know, nickel and diming me? OK, I don't I don't want that kind of relationship. And I mean, yeah, those are the those are the big ones. Those are the big ones. So so that was actually a lot. <laughs> it was a lot <laughs> that you just kind of threw out there. Uh, well, recap it for me. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I do want to re re reiterate one is that there's some attorneys out there that say they do real estate transactions, only it's like you said, it's only 15% of their business. And the rest of the time they're doing divorce, they're doing, you know, traffic tickets, they're doing whatever. So it's like you said, it's important, I think, to get somebody that is actually focused on real estate. Well, what you just said triggers me to say that, you know, I don't mind doing business with a real estate, I mean, excuse me, a attorney, a firm, of attorneys that have multiple attorneys and like, like, okay. So the real estate attorney firm that I deal with, and they've been handling my transactions for 15 years right here in my area. Well, there's four principles in that firm. One principle deals with actually the counties. They are the, um, what's the word for it, Chaffee? When someone is deemed incompetent, they're the firm that handles that with, for that individual. If someone's deemed to be a guardian, you know, for an individual, they have, so that's one attorney. Another attorney, uh, you know, handles the um, domestic stuff, all right? Another attorney handles the estates and wills and corporate planning. And then my attorney, Julie, that's all she does. That's all she does is real estate transactions. That's her thing. She doesn't do bankruptcy. She doesn't do divorce. She doesn't do wills. She does real estate. So again, I reiterate, I don't mind if the firm has got 30 lawyers in there, but I want my attorney. That's what they do. Absolutely. 
And also, I think there's a difference between just doing real estate transactions and working with real estate investors. So oh my word by that as well. Absolutely. I mean, I gave such a fast answer, I forgot what I said. But <laughs> I want them to I want them to be on board. I don't want to have to train my attorney. All right. So right. I've got, you know, I'm not an attorney. I shouldn't be training an attorney, but unfortunately, sometimes you have to. But like I've got students and I've heard this repeatedly, Chaffee, and you have too. I got students that get in touch with a real estate supposedly attorney. They do real estate transactions. They don't even know what subject two is. Right. My word. Subject two is on the closing statement, line 203. It's already there. Purchase subject to the existing note. So, yeah. Right. Excuse my and, preaching. And so, you know, what, what should I be paying these guys per hour? How much per hour per deal per what? I mean, what do you, what do you recommend, Jay? It is market specific. I mean, Hey, I want to ask you the same question, Chappie, after I answer, because you're in Chicago, right? Yeah. I mean, it's got, what you do, what's it got? 8 million people up there. Yeah. Over 8 million people in the metropolitan yeah. area. I got 40,000. Okay. So, <laughs> so anyway, so right now, when I buy a house, and here's the thing, it don't matter what, it don't matter how much private money I'm borrowing. It doesn't matter the price of the house, whether I do a $30,000 transaction or a $500,000 transaction, it's the same fee, right? So it's 650 bucks, but, but let me break that down because attorneys break that down different ways. My attorney charges 450 bucks for the transaction for the it includes the title search, blah, blah, blah. Then they charge $200 for documentation prep for preparing the documents, preparing the deed. So that that's 650. Now that does not include my title insurance. Okay. So we get the title insurance policy. So there's other closing fees. And by the way, folks, of course you don't have to come up with this out of your pocket. Use the private money that I teach. No, you've got no money coming out of your out of your pocket. Private lender funds the whole thing. But yeah, that's six hundred and fifty dollars to the to the to the real estate attorney. And mine does not nickel and dime me. Okay. In fact, I'm so glad you asked the question, Chaffee, and here's why. <laughs> Put your sleep not on for this. I get all my title searches done for free. Free by the real estate attorney. And here's what I mean by that. They're all free. The only ones I pay for are the ones that I close on. So yes, I'm paying, you know, in that 450 bucks for the title search, but my lands, it's only been two weeks ago, Chavi. We've been working on this deal for 45 days. It's an estate, right? I got the offer to purchase or my team got the offer to purchase signed by six different people from all across. They were, it's an estate thing, you know? If there's heirs across the nation and the husband of one couple didn't want to sign because they're getting a separate. I mean, they're getting a divorce. Right. So he's refusing to sign. So, you know, we got it all negotiated. Here come the signatures. Goes to my real estate attorney. She does the title search. Comes back with over twenty thousand dollars in uh, claims against the estate. Whew. Dead deal. Dead yeah. deal. I don't know how much time my attorney spent on that deal. Am I getting charged a penny? No, because it all comes down to relationships. Awesome. Awesome. And so, you know, that kind of brings up an, another, a follow up question is in uh, where you're at. Do you use a title company or mm -hmm. just the attorney does everything for you? Right. Good question. So across the nation, we have closings done. Typically, real estate closings done by three different types of entities. One is either the real estate attorney. Mm -hmm. Another is a title company. Another one is an escrow company. They all three across the nation, depending on where you're located. So here's my advice. Since you are now a real estate investor or you're soon or you soon will be, do not have title companies close your deals. Do not have escrow companies close your deals. An escrow company and title company is not going to know what to do with a lease option, assignment of contract or subject to. They don't even speak that language. You want your real estate, you want a real estate attorney, regardless of where you are, doing the closings on your deals. So I use real estate. So here's my answer. Yes, I use a real estate attorney, but I recommend 
you use a real estate attorney for all your closings, no matter where you're doing the business. Just to uh, answer your question, here in Chicago or in the uh, Illinois area, we actually do both. So we actually have a title company where the closing occurs, and we hire an attorney that goes to the closing to make sure all the paperwork is proper and, and reviews the title work and all that kind of stuff. So we, we do both of those. Cool, cool. So what's your real estate attorney at their charge? It, it just depends upon the the attorney. And on the very low end, it's about 300 bucks. On the high end, it's up to 1,000. I would say the average is probably four to 500. Um, okay. And the difference though, is that, you know, we're paying the attorney the, let's just say $500. And we're also paying a title company a couple, you know, two or three hundred dollars in addition to that. So it's not it's it's kind of broken up between the two. Well, and it sounds to me like at the bottom line is within a hundred bucks of what I'm paying. Yeah. In a, uh, here in eastern North Carolina. All right, excellent. We're about out of time, Chaffee. Anything else on finding a real estate attorney to work with? Yeah, just uh one final question, which is how do you how do you evaluate the attorney, once you start working with them, if they're good or if you should find somebody else further down on your list or, you know, how, how do you decide, hey, I want to keep working with this person? Well, that's got more than one answer. So <laughs> we'll make I'll, it quick. <laughs> you got to make it quick because this show is out of time. That's right. So here, OK, first, let me just first, let me just give a fact. All right. I don't care who the real estate attorney is or the firm. Whenever you're getting ready to do a closing, always review the documentation before you get there. You want to have them send you the settlement statement, which, by the way, that is normally right. But the promissory note. Here's the here's the deal, folks. Always proof the documents that you've asked them to prepare. Like when I borrow private money a lot, I borrow millions and millions in private money. Always review the promissory note because here's what happens. Once you get a relationship going with an attorney, all they're going to do is pull the most recent promissory note and edit it is what they're going to do. They're not going to start from scratch. And they it's very easy for them to miss a little piece. They might have the payment on there from the previous deal or whatever. So prove it. So I'm just saying don't fire your real estate attorney because sometimes they got to make changes to your note that they didn't find. Okay. But my, here's the bottom line. It all comes down to responsiveness, period, period. In this world, we got to move and we got to move fast. All right. Uh, we're dealing with motivated sellers. We're dealing with, you know, buyers, uh, particularly the motivated sellers. You know, some, I mean, the, we put on every offer to purchase, Chaffee. You know this. I'm closing seven days. But if I don't have a relationship with a real estate attorney and get, get me documents done within 24 hours, I can't close in seven days. You know, I get my title searches done within 48 business hours, you know, so they got to be fast. They got to be responsive and they got to get your stuff done. And once you're giving them enough business, they got to be willing to move you to the top of the stack to get your stuff done. They're not going to do that until you have, you know, given them some business. But hey, look, if it's your first deal and it took two or three weeks to close and that's all you were waiting on was the real estate attorney, wrong attorney. Wrong attorney. If I got to wait two weeks or more to close, different attorney. <laughs> but you know, time kills deals. Time kills deals. Right. And so earlier you uh, had mentioned, uh, you know, to review the paperwork and documentation. I'm just going to jump the gun and say, hey, when the students start working with you, you're going to tell them what to review, what to look for in these promissory notes and these this document and paperwork, right? right? Absolutely. We when, when we work together, in fact, we do this at the live events. We pull out actual, I give out actual sample, you know, uh, the documentation from closings and I show the attendees what to look for. I even go over this really simple one page email template. You just fill in the blanks, shoot it to the paralegal or the attorney, gives them everything they need to know to prepare the documents. So we make it super easy, super easy. So Jay, how do they get to your live event again? Yep. So go to www.jayconnor.jay.com. C O N N E R dot com forward slash all in lowercase money podcast. And again, it's a $97 registration fee for the $3,000 event. Chaffee, before we wrap up, let's do what we always do towards the end. 
And that is, you know, you are the personal development guru. You got the mindset down. You know, every time we're together, Chavi, I just learned so much from you as well about, you know, this, you know, what's our filter? You know, what, what, what kind of lens are we, are we seeing life and business from? We love books. I know you always are getting the new books, the new books that are coming out. And I was turned on to, to a new book this past week. So have you gotten a new book recently, Chaffee, that you're like all excited about? And if you haven't, what's one of your favorites? <laughs> I've read hundreds and hundreds of books. I'm, I'm a big reader. And I, I, regarding books, I don't want to mention a book this time. I want to actually give a piece of advice about reading books, if, if that's okay. Perfect. Um, and, and my piece of advice is, is that, you know, sometimes people make a goal of reading 20, 30 books a year or a book a month or a book a week. And my recommendation is, is slow down. <laughs> and, you know, when you find a book, when you get a good book to read or a good book recommendation, read the book and absorb it, right? Take some nuggets, you know, five or 10 bullet points that you're going to implement in your life and in your business right away. So instead of just reading something, putting it down, saying, oh, yeah, I learned a whole bunch of stuff and then reading the next one and putting it down and not really implementing or applying or taking action on what you just read, you know, read a book, fully absorb it, understand it, take some key points and really start implementing those strategies in your life and in your business. And I'll tell you, the results you're going to see are going to explode versus just reading 20 books a year. So, you know, that's my book recommendation. I know we talked about a whole bunch of them, only, you know, memorize the key points and really make them a part of you. You know, something really jumps out at you so that you'll start seeing those breakthroughs in your life. Yeah. So with that being the case, I'm not going to give out a book. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to share with everybody right now as we wrap up how it is that I digest so much information without having to read a, you know, a bunch of books very quickly. And then what do I do with the information? So I subscribe to this company called uh, Readpreneur. Read, it's, a, it's short for Read Entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And when they have book summaries, book summaries, they deliver it online. They actually, you get a book, you know, you actually deliver the the U.S. Postal Service is still in business. You actually get, you know, a book in the mail. You can you can get it online or whatever. And so they'll take like a 200 page book and boil it down to the main points for you to observe in like, you know, 20 or 25 pages in big print. <laughs> so, you know, that's the strategy. So you don't have to spend all that time with everything that's in the book, you know, Get the information boiled down. And then here's the, here's, how I, here's how I absorb it. So part of my morning ritual is reading for 20 minutes. It mostly in the, in the personal development, self-improvement space. I'll read for 20 minutes and then I will journal for 10 minutes. What do I do in the journaling? I'm writing down lessons learned of what I just read for 20 minutes. So not only do I read it, but now the magic happens. And I've heard you teach this, Chappie. The magic happens when you, I'm not talking about on a laptop, a a pen and a pad or in a journal book. I've got an actual really nice journal about, well, you can't see me on screen, that big. And and, and so when I'm writing, so I journal five days a week, okay? And I'm journaling and I'm writing what, what just really resonated with me as to what I just read the past 20 minutes. And so it helps uh, stick with me. Chappie, we're out of time. Final comments. Final comments is uh, we always say, uh, please uh, subscribe, rate, and review. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube. Put a comment down. And as I just mentioned about books, take action, implement. You know, nothing happens without action. So go out there, sign up for the uh, upcoming three-day live event and get out there and really start doing things. Absolutely. Chavi, thank you once again for joining me here on the uh, Jay Connor Show. Everybody, thank you for taking the time to listen in. Look forward to seeing you, or at least if we don't see you, you don't see us on the uh, you know iTunes. And here is to taking your business to the next level. Bye for now.